This is MathFeels.com where you can find more links to math YouTube videos and computer science. Let's take a li look at linear functions and models. You're going to find much of this is just the same as uh, same as before. Having a function notation in there doesn't, doesn't change it. Let's look at our first problem here g of x is equal to negative 3x plus 2. Now if you remember um, slope-intercept form, slope-intercept form was y is equal to mx plus b. Well, doesn't matter that we have function notation here because remember they're interchangeable. So this is the same as having y is equal to negative 3x plus 2. A lot of people like this better for graphing purposes. Well, if you have it in this form, this is our y intercept. So our y intercept is 2, and this is our slope. And slope, you want to write in fraction form for graphing purposes. So that'd be negative 3 over 1. Change in y over change in x means down 3 and write 1. So if I want to graph this one by hand, uh, I go to the y-intercept and I put a dot. From there, I'm going to go down 3 and write 1. So 1, 2, 3, down 3, write 1, and that's where my second point would be. So now that I have my second point, I draw a line through to both of them, and that would be our graph. Now to graph this on a TA3, TA4, I'm going to press my Y equals, clear. It's a, the dash is at the very beginning of my problem, so it's a negative. So we've got negative 3X, and then plus 2, and then graph it. And I'll give the same graph as what I got there. Let's take a look at our second problem here. <coughs> P of x is equal to negative two-thirds x minus one. Now notice in my original problem the negative was out in front. We don't want the negative out in front. We want it either on top or the bottom. It helps with graphing. Well, this is our y-intercept. So y intercept is negative 1. And this is our slope, which would be negative 2 thirds. Now, a slope is changing y over changing x, so it's a negative 2, so that means we're going to go down 2. It's a positive 3, which means we'll go right 3. Okay, so y intercept of uh, negative 1, go put our dot there. Now from there, we're going to use our slope to get our second point. So it says we're going to go down 2, go down 2, and write 3. And that's where we put our second point. And then we draw a line through them. Make it dot a little bit bigger if you miss it. Um, it should be a straight line. <laughs> I just got done uh, cutting my, brush, my bush outside, so arms a little... I'll blame that on why I can't draw a straight line. Okay, I'll press Y equals, press clear. It's negative. The dash is the very beginning of our problem, so it's negative. 2 divided by 3, X, and it's a minus, because it's between two items. If it's a first in whatever, then it's a negative. If it's between two items, like between an X and a number, then it's a minus. Minus 1, yeah, and graph. And that'll give us a, a straight line um, versus whatever I drew here. Now, the next problem is asking us to find a zero. So let's take a look how to do that. We've got f of x is equal to 2x plus 10. Now, 
And I'll put an S here because later on we'll see there's more than one zero. But what we're going to do is um, set it equal to zero. So set it equal to zero and solve. So we'll set the 2x plus 10 equal to 0. As a linear equation, I'll take 10 over the right side, becomes a negative 10. Divide both sides by 2. Those 2's cancel. And uh, negative 10 divided by 2 gives us uh, negative 5. And that's our answer. <coughs> Let's take a look at another one. P of Q is equal to 1 6 Q plus 3. The instruction again is to find the zero. Well, to find the zero is always the same way. You set it equal to zero and solve it. Now, how you solve it is, is a different, different matter. Um, so we'll set 1 6 Q plus 3 equal to zero and solve it. Now, this is a linear equation. Remember our steps. First step is get rid of parentheses, don't have any. Second step is give her fractions. Uh, I'll multiply everything by the LCM of all our denominators. We only have one denominator, so we'll multiply everything by 6. That is our LCM. Now, when I say everything, I'm talking about what's separated by pluses, minuses, and equals. So we take 1 6 times, or 6 times 1 6 Q. The 6 is cancel. And we got Q. 6 times 3, which gives us 18. And 6 times 0, which gives us 0. Now take the 18 to the right side, then it becomes a negative 18, and that's our 0. Let's start a new page here. And we'll look at our last problem. Some of these uh, lessons are pretty short. This says draw a scatter, scatter diagram. So let's do that first. And we're given uh, x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and y is 2.4, 3.2, 5.7, 9.1, 11.2. .1, now, scatter diagram is a, a fancy word for plotting points. So let's plot these. Now, x values goes up to 5. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Our highest y value is 11.2. So let's go up to 12. One we can easily divide by. Um, uh, halfway up there is 6. Halfway to 6 is 3. And then between 6 and 12 is 9. Now our first point is 1, 2.4. Yeah, 2.4 is maybe about right there. I'm just guessing. Make it a little bit bigger if you're not sure. 2, 3.2. That'd be about right there. 3, 5.7. That'd be right there. 4, 9.1. Right there. 5, 11.2. If my eyes were a little bit better, I could probably even do that a little bit more precise. But that's good enough. We're just kind of sketching it, trying to get a view. We'd use Excel if we wanted any kind of precision. Now B says, select two points from a scatter diagram, find the equation line containing the points selected. Now we want to pick uh, two um, that pretty well represents this. Like if I had one clear out here, I wouldn't want to choose it. Um, so I'm going to choose the first one and the last one. So our first one is 1, 2.4. And our last one is 5, 11.2. Now I remember um, the steps to, to finding this is first step is to find m. And uh, this would be x1, y1. This is x2, y2. And we've got a formula. Uh, m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to have 11.2 minus 2.4. 
over 5 minus 1. Um, I'm not very good with decimals. Uh, hmm. I think 8.8. .8. 2, 1, yeah, 8.8. .8. 5 minus 1 is 4. Which gives us, um, what does that give us? Maybe, um, well, let me go ahead and first make it, uh, well, I want to simplify this. And we don't want, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it to you. Um, we don't want decimals in there, so I'll multiply top and bottom by 10, which would give us 88 over 40. Which now they're both visible by 8 at least. So that gives us 11 over 5. Again, we didn't want decimals because we're going to graph this. And if you're going to graph it, then having decimals in there just makes it nasty. Okay, so remember our second step. Into the equation, y is equal to mx plus b. Plug in one of the points for x and y. I'll choose the first one. Put that in for x, put that in for y. So I got 2.4 equals m, we said, said was 11 fifths, times 1 plus b. So 11, 11 fifths times 1 is 11 fifths plus b. Take that over to the other side. 2 fourths minus 11 fifths equals b. And this one actually, a decimal is fine by me. Um, so I'm going to go plug this in my calculator and see what I get. 2.4 minus 11 fifths. Enter. And we get 0.2. Now that's also equal to, on your calculator, if you have a decimal, it's very nice. You just press math, enter, enter. And that tells us B is 1 fifth. So, we plug in our M we just found, which was 11 fifths, and our B, I'll go ahead and put 1 fifth here, but that would be our equation on the line. Now, it tells us to graph it on a scatter diagram. That's why the, the decimal here makes it a little easier, because this is our y-intercept. 0.2, we do it in red. 0.2, maybe B about right there. Now, remember... The the slope is a change in y over a change in x. That's why a fraction is better than decimal. I was going to just put 2.2 .2 down. But this means I'm going to go up 11 and write 5. Uh, up 11, uh, if this is 0.2, up 11 is 11.2. It should be about, let's say, right here. And write 5. Be, um, I had to draw it right, but... <laughs> It'd be right here. Um, more or less. Geez, there's more noise here than... Anyway, when I draw it, there's our line. Trains, dogs. Um, you see how it passes through this point and this point? It has to. That's why I was kind of drawing a little bit sloppy. Um... But if I did a little bit more precise, if you found the equation line passing through these two points, it should pass through those two points. But I wanted to emphasize the um, slope-intercept form. And that should be the last of that section, short sections. So let me save this.